Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky and the Elon Paul channel. I'm Paul, as you might imagine. So this little floating head over on the side here is me. And we're going to do this a little differently. The weekend anomaly mission we're going to do with me present over here in this little box on the side. Now I've had some questions recently in regards to my system. Someone wanted to know uh, what my specs were, how I have my game set up, things like that. So I want to cover that real quick first in just the first few minutes. First of all, nothing impressive about my computer system that I'm running here. I am running this on PC. I'm not playing it on a PlayStation or Xbox or anything like that. Um, the PC that I have here is an old build, several years old, that has been upgraded to death. It has about 16 gigs of RAM. I'm running an i7 processor, about a 6th or 7th generation uh, MSI motherboard, nothing special there. 16 gigs of RAM, which is as much as this motherboard can handle. And I have recently gone from a GTX 1650 Super to an RTX 3060. Uh, and the RTX has uh, 12 gigs of video RAM on it. So that's helped me out quite a bit in regards to a lot of the video processing and things that I'll be doing in the game. So um, let's get on to settings real quick here, and I'll explain what you're seeing there in the background in just a moment. General settings, nothing special. Got the music and sound effects a little bit lower than usual. I uh, have the HUD enabled unless I'm doing a no HUD challenge. Uh, let's see here... Language right-handed, disabled the auto torch. I don't like having the torch come on when I go into dark places or when the nighttime comes on. I'd rather turn it on on my own. So that's just me. Uh, display and graphics, which is what you're probably more concerned with. I always go in bordered mode. It helps keep the game active on the screen, even when I have to alternate tab into other screens and stuff like that. Uh, primary monitor, 1980, uh, 1080p that is. Um, V-Sync is off. Max FPS is 60. I'm not running any gaming monitors here. They're pretty cheap monitors. As you can see, it's got the RTX 3060 in here. Quality. Everything I have set to enhanced except for post-processing and planet quality. I really want the planet quality to be a little higher so I can see the things on it. I do a lot of permadeath, no starter ship challenges, so I really like to have as much available on the planet that I can see from a good distance. I can not I can run it in ultra the whole game. Kind of slows it down a little bit. The 3060 even, it has a little bit of trouble with it with that much video RAM. And it's probably not it, too. It's probably the processor kind of choking up on it. Uh, these are the other settings in here. This DLSS is set specifically, if you look on the right-hand side, uh, for RTX technology. So that's the reason why I have that on there. I keep the motion blur off because I really don't like motion blur when I'm playing. Just just me. Again, personal Network. I usually have the multiplayer disabled. I do turn it on from time to time, and when it's on, PvP is off. Last thing I want is doing a permadeath, no starter ship challenge, and a friend jumps in and strafes me with their ship. Last thing you want to happen. Uh, let's move along to accessibility. Um, nothing special here in regards to these settings up here. Um, I do have to hold to confirm. As you know, when you select certain items, you have to hold down a button for a few seconds and you get the roundabout circle that goes around it to select it. I have mine set to instant, so if I select something, instantly selects it rather than having to wait a few extra seconds to do so. That does speed things up. When you're selecting things left and right in a speed run, you can actually waste a couple of minutes, two to three minutes sometimes, and just selecting things throughout the whole run. Not a bad idea to change that to instant, but be advised if you're destroying something, it instantly destroys it. Yeah. Vibration strength? No. I'm running a keyboard and mouse. Just no. Really? No. All right. Camera. Uh, field of view. I have both of these set to 100%. I'd like to see as... Or 100 degrees, that is. I'd like to see as much as I can. It's just the way it is. It does drag things down a little bit, but it does help, too. Uh, on foot camera, normal. Flight controls, normal. Third person movie uh, movement, not a problem. First head bob. Uh, first person head bob. I do not like the head bobbing. Nope. Can't handle that in first person. That just not isn't going to happen. I don't even do it in Minecraft. All right, moving on. Uh, controls. Personal preference here, mostly, folks. So that's up to you. That's up to you what you want to do there. And then finally, difficulty, which is depending upon the settings you have, the normal, survival, and permadeath. They have their own standard settings. Then you have your custom settings. You can go in there as well, including creative. So, I leave those alone. Alright, so that's pretty much it. That's all we have to show you in regards to settings is concerned. Now, of course, you're looking at my character right now, and you're like, man, that's not the normal character I'm used to seeing. That is correct. See, what happened is, is I've already done the anomaly mission on my regular save, got all the way through all this, and then found I didn't have my microphone turned on. I looked down, and I saw the red light blinking. I'm like, you can't, no, I didn't have it muted the whole time. 
Sure enough, 20-25 minutes worth of video right out the window. So I pulled up my alternative save. This is my very first save where my ships aren't even fixed up since last year around this time when they had that big update that screwed everything up. Alright, so we're going to head over here to the anomaly and I think I know what it is. wonder why that would be. Eliminate hazardous flora. How weird. So we're going to be killing some plants. So let's go ahead and initialize the mission. In this case, it's given me 11 life support gels and 1800 quicksilver. Those are the only two, uh, looks like the only two rewards I'm getting out of this one. Last time I did it, and it randomizes. Last time I did it, it gave me um, a circuit board and some nanites. So let's go ahead and do this into the ship. This is the only ship I have in my inventory, by the way, on this character that actually is in any decent shape. The rest of them still have to have their, all their inventory fixed up and, you know, uh, the weapons and stuff like that all fixed. Something, things along those lines. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess this is. But here we are. We're doing this now. So I hope you don't mind seeing my mug over here. And our ship is in the Awalag system, and we are going to be heading towards this planet over here. Just got to wait for the leaf to show up. There we go. On our way. All right. This planet, nothing special about it. I will tell you that it has high sentinel activity, not aggressive. So they won't attack unless you either A, attack them, or B, attack something near them. Plants, animals, things like that. The second thing you have to worry about on this planet is going to be the aggressive animals. There are nine animals on them on this planet. Three of them are underwater. Uh, two are flying, I think it is, and then five on the ground. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, that's ten. Two flying, four on the ground. That sounds better. Yeah, that's better. And of the ground-based animals, the four, two of them are aggressive and will attack on sight. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to come down here. We're going to skim the surface. We're looking for, in our radar, a grave marker, which is going to be a diamond-shaped marker, kind of like shaped like the atlas, but in gold. So as we get close to this, keep an eye open on your radar for it. So it says search. So just keep an eye on the radar. You want to go back and forth a little bit, and you should be able to find it. It shouldn't be too far away. I'm going to focus. Look for little depressions in the ground, like bowl-shaped depressions like over there. Sometimes there, it'll be right there. It won't be in the water. It'll definitely be on land. Wow, I'm not really finding it anywhere. I wonder if it's up on the hill. Could be. Let's go up here. Let's see if it's up here. You have to actually be pretty close to find it. I'll go all the way up here. Let's just check. I'm going to say it's not here. All right. Well, I guess what we're going to have to do here, this, this doesn't happen too often. We're going to have to land. We don't have much of a choice but to land and take a look around. All right. Let's take a look. And what I do is I go left and right a little bit when it's that far away to get a rough idea. So it's this way, about a thousand units, 900 it says, but I say about a thousand. And let's take a drive this way. We'll go a little bit. And bring it in. Right about here. Might be on that hill up there, but I could swore I flew over that, so let's find out. So over that way now. Great. I am going to keep doing running and jumping here. You have to hit this gravestone, unfortunately, because you have to get the story as to what happened and why it happened. And I'm going to hit that plant. Nope, didn't hit it. Is it right here? Really? It is. Gosh darn it all. There it is, right in front of me. As you can see, that diamond-shaped thing with the atlas-shaped symbol on it. And I literally landed right on it. I wonder if I can select it. Yep, we can. The atmosphere here, but by the strangling vines, very little ammunition. 
The fallen traveler's log seems to mention the floral infestation, but holds no further clues. I'll need to scout to look for more hazardous flora. All right. Yeah, I wonder if we can select it again. I always wondered this, and I've been wanting to try it. Uh, no, it won't let me select it a second time. All right. And it looks like we have some buried tech over there. So if we hit the F button, of course, and we're looking through our vine, uh, finder, it's going to look for plants that we can find that we can, you know, that we can get. There's one up there. Your best option, this planet has a lot of flora on the surface that you can take out. But you also have a lot of animals here, so just watch out for them. But other than that, let's go ahead and head over there. Finding a cave would be optimal. You can find a lot of hazardous flora in caves. Hey there, how you doing? He knocked me off the hill. <laughs> and I've got my bolt caster for some reason. I thought I switched over to my laser. There we go. If you have a runic laser, it might actually take them out a lot quicker than that. You usually burp and you're done. Um, this character does not have an Atlantid multi-tool. I didn't know that either. So, learning a lot here. All right. It says too weak for distance estimate. Don't believe it. It just means that the plants that could be up there just haven't procedurally generated yet. So let's head over here. We'll take a look around. And if you want to, look at the ground. You'll have to get out of your scanning mode into this mode and look at the ground and look for any buried things. Not not buried sub-organic structures like that. You want to look like for subterranean things, uh, which would be not here, apparently. So we don't have any caves near us that I can see. We do have a unknown building about 500 blocks away this way. So let's go ahead and head over there. Oh. That's made a distance. There's a target in range right there. See? We couldn't find it before because it hadn't generated yet. Oh, it looks like there's another one on the other side. Let's go ahead and grab them both. We'll grab this one. One. So we got 13 to get. Two. Oh, there was two of them back to back. There we go. Three and four. Excellent. It says there's another one down here. Hmm. Can't quite see it. I don't want to go down there too far because I already worked my way up here very carefully. There we go. We can see it now. There we go. Any more down there? Too weak. Okay, so good. We don't have to worry about any more over here. So we're up to five already. We have to get 13. Now, my other character, when I was playing, I had to get 15 of them. So I think the amount that you have to get is based on your character. And there is whatever structure it is over there. Too weak to find. I don't believe that for a moment. Let's head down. Whee! We're going to check out whatever the structure is over there real quick. It's over there. You can zoom in sometimes, and sometimes you can see things, but not always. All right. Just keep this open, and you can find things. Trust me, it will. they will pop into existence. This planet is very much known for those little snapping flytrap-style ones, even though you've been seeing me hit the balloon ones. Yeah. The flytrap-style ones are the ones that you want to look out for. Fly? Flytrap? Is that what they're called? Fly? Venus flytraps? Yeah. You know, like a big, huge Venus flytraps. Ah, that's what we got down there. And as you can see, we got a plant. Now, if I take that plant out... Hi. How you doing? Just give him a few seconds to scan you and move on. Once the red light goes out from above his head, you're free to kill whatever it is. And boom, done. And now he'll investigate again. And you can move on. He'll get over it. Ah, is this a cave? Why, yes. Yes, it is. Caves are ripe with these things here. So let's take a look around. We should see hazardous flora in here someplace. Wow, this is kind of stuffed full of things, though. There's one up there. And they usually come in clusters. See, there's a second one right next to it. Much better. Oh, the third one. Excellent. So that gives us three more. We're up to 19. We only need four more. So I just need to look for one more cluster of these things, and we ought to be good. Do -do -do. Oh, there's one right at my feet there. Hold on. Let me just get past it. Uh, it was there, wasn't it? 
Yep, there it is, right next to that uh, guy. The marrow. Yeah, it's all right. And we got him. So that's another one gone. And if you look around, see? Right there, there's two more right up there, a third one over there. They're likely up above, and since we only need three more, why don't we head out and take a look at them? Oh, the one over here is... Is it up at the ceiling? I think it is. Can't quite see it. Nope, it isn't. It is out. Alright, let's get out of the cave. Let's head up there. There we go. We've got a snapper right there. And two blowhards right next to each other. That'll complete my 13. One. And two. And we're done. Eliminated. We're all set. Think we'll get here in time to prevent him from attacking me? Ha ha! Nice try, buddy. We're in my ship, though. Excellent. And we're on our way. Good deal. So that would it wasn't too, too shabby, was it? Too easy? Too hard? I don't know. I don't think it'll be a problem for most, most of you to get that done. So we're going to go ahead and pull in the Space Anomaly. And head back and complete this mission. So we will be finishing this out, but I want to give a little heads up that tomorrow, that is Saturday the 27th, at around 4.15 to 4.30 p.m., maybe closer to 5, depending upon how things go for the day, we are going to be doing a live stream. And we will be doing the Stranded Challenge from Beeblebum. I will be doing that for the third time, live streaming it. Hopefully we'll do a little better than the one I'm doing offline right now. That thing's going on for like 4 hours, 5 hours, and I still have yet to find a ship. So, anywho. Here we go. We're at the Nexus. We're going to complete our mission. We'll get our reward, and we're done. So if we check our inventory real quick, that gives us marrow bulbs. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. It did get, didn't give us anything but the Quicksilver, which this character has a lot less Quicksilver than my other ones do. I will show you real quick just in the Quicksilver store. Normally we go in here and see what they have for sale. Well, guess what? There's not a lot for sale because the community research has not been going on for, well since before the Expedition Redux. So I'm not sure what's going on other than I think they're focusing on the update that's going to be coming out probably in the next few weeks. I'm thinking somewhere in the second, maybe third week of February tops. That's also when the game will go on sale. For those of you who do not, who do not play, you should see it for half the price that it normally is in the Steam store as well as in play, uh, PlayStation, Xbox. Um, even the Switch should also be on sale. When the update comes out, they will most likely, they do this twice a year in February and again sometime around August, they do uh, Twitch drops. So if you want to do Twitch drops, you can cash in on them here by watching your favorite Twitch streamer. I don't, I don't stream on Twitch. But you can go to your Twitch rewards over here and you can pick up all the things that you've collected by watching the shows, usually for about three hours. And that gives you everything you need from that, from that day. It'll be five days worth running Thursday through, sun, through Monday. So that should take care of it. So let's go ahead and conclude our video today. We want to thank you all for watching. Please hit the like button. That really helps our analytics a lot us, for us creators. And in the meantime, uh, if you liked what you've been seeing here, by all means, check out my other videos that are on my channel. Uh, hit the subscribe if you like, you know, if you'd like to. I, I'm not going to ask you to do so, but it would be nice. And we will see you all again in the next video. So the obligatory wave. Take care, everybody.